Hello Phoenix and Typhlo Maniacs! In this video, I would like to show you how you can use Phoenix in combination with Typhlo to instance your explosions all over your scene and create a total destruction. So let's get started. First, I will start by creating a sphere. Then I'll go and add a gasoline explosion preset to it. In order for our simulation to run a bit faster, I will go into my grid rollout and decrease the resolution a few times. And I'll go in my output rollout and specify a folder where our caches sh should be saved. This way, when we use Typhlo to instance our simulators, our caches will be read correctly, like so. And now let's start simming. While this is simming, I'll go into my About menu for Chaos Phoenix, and I'm using a Phoenix 441 nightly build from the 27th of October. But this should be working with the official 441 builds as well. Okay, so I think this is more than enough frames. And if we scrub our timeline, we can see that we get this nice, cool looking explosion. Okay, the next thing that we'll need is we want to create a plane. So this is where our particles will be born. And in order to be a bit easier to see what's going on, we'll choose a green color, like so. And I'll add a bit more segments. This way we, we can distribute our particles a bit better. And for the default shading, in here, I will choose etched faces, so this way we can see our faces for the plane. Then let's go and create a Typhlo node. And for Typhlo, I'm using version 0 0.16128 beta. So let's open the Typhlo settings and the first thing that we'll need is a BERT operator because we want to spam our particles and we want to create them over our plane. So let's choose a position object and pick our plane like so. Let's change the display color to red. So this way we'll be able to see our particles and I'm going to choose a uh, large dots. Okay, so now if I scrub my timeline, we have particles created. For our tutorial, let's create only five particles and I want to create them in the first 20 frames of our timeline. This way, it will be a lot faster to work with in this example scene. Okay, uh, so we have our particles created, but what if you don't like how they are positioned over the plane? You can go into your position object operator and in here you have different uh, locations. So you can uh, use the vertices, for example, and you can see it will create it in the vertices or uh, some other types. I'll choose face centers random and if you still don't like how they are distributed in here there is a seat option at the bottom and if you change it you'll notice the particles will be created at different places okay so this is how you can change the position the next thing that we want to do is we want rotation so that our simulators will be rotated randomly. And in this case, we want them to be rotated only horizontally. 
So I'll choose random horizontal. And the final thing that we'll need is an export particles operator. So let's create one and drag it at the bottom. Whoops. Okay. And then I will choose the export type to be objects. And in here for the reference objects, I will pick our Phoenix simulator. And then if we go in here and export the particles as objects, press yes. And then we have simulators over our particles. Okay, so far so good. But if we scroll the timeline, you can notice that all the simulators are starting from the exact same frame, even though they are born at a later time, the cache loaded inside is still the same one as in here. So why this happens is because we're using an instance. And if I go and select my simulator like so, and go into the rendering options and change the color of our fire, like so, you'll notice that all of our simulators change. And this might be working for your scene and you're fine up to this step, but if you want to have different settings for each simulator, and you want them to start one after another from the beginning of the simulation, then we'll need to use copies instead. While we are here in the options, I'll disable the volume light cache because I'm using the progressive rendering and in this case, this might slow down things a bit. So let's close this thing in here and in our export particles, we want to choose copies instead. And let's go into our scene explorer and we can select all of our Typhlo nodes and delete it. If you have a five or 10 simulators uh, created via um, the export particles, your scene might be manageable, but if you want to make a hundred or a thousand, it will start to slow down. So what you can do instead is in here at the bottom, we have this option called enable auto export on render. This way, uh, when you start to render, Typhlow would export all of the simulators. It will keep them in the RAM and when you finish your render, it will delete them and it won't populate your scene. And this way your scene will be fast and responsive. So if we go and do a test render like so, we have all of our simulators in the scene, but they are not visible in the viewport. In the viewport, we can see only the particles. Okay, but we chose copies, but now all of our simulators are still starting from the same frame. They are rotated, but they are starting from the same frame. And we need to offset that. I'll stop the render. And the way to offset the caches in our Phoenix simulation is by going into its options and in the input rollout we have this option called cache origin. So if I change it you can notice that we are starting from a different frame. So we what we want to do is we want to take this cache origin parameter and change it based on when each particle is born. So the way to do this is by using some max script in here in the export particles options. So we have this 
raw thing here called objects max script and we can turn it on and what Tyson did is he added this nice little question mark and if you click it you have some cheat sheet on how the max script should be should be looking in this case we have uh, this tf obj parameter so this will represent our object that we're referencing and the tf time so so we want to change the cache origin parameter of our tf object so let's find out how the cache origin parameter is called in max script so the easiest way to do this is go and open the listener window and change the parameter like so and when i change it you can see that we can uh, it's called input offset if you don't see anything when you change the parameters you need to enable the macro recorder like so and if i change another option you can see that it will show what's the name of this option as well so what we need in this case is the imp offset so let's set this to zero this is the default volume and copy this then because we want to reference our original object in here we need to type tf object and paste the parameter in here and what we want to do is reference when our particles are born so this is tf time but what we want to do is use the negative value of tf time so this way it will offset our time correctly so what we want to do is times minus one and now if i start our render you can see that our simulators are starting from a different point in time okay and in order to check how this looks better we can go in here at the bottom and disable the auto export on render and export our particles as objects so this way we'll be able to see them in our scene and if i scrub my timeline we can know our explosions and they're starting from the beginning okay guys so this is what i wanted to show you I hope this was useful and I'll see you in the next video.